welcome to the chrome plating process, courtesy of Lakeside Custom Plating. The first step in chrome plating is to rack the part for the stripping process. When the part is racked, it is taken to the sodium hydroxide to strip off the chrome. There needs to be a clear contact on the bus bar for the part to be stripped evenly. The part is then dipped into the sodium hydroxide and the tank is activated. When the part is fully stripped, which varies in time based on the size and shape of the part, it is pulled out and dipped in hot water. The next step is to strip off the nickel in a tank containing just enough sulfuric acid to do the job. Once again, a clear contact is necessary before the tank is activated. This step is very crucial in the stripping process and the one most likely to destroy the part. For example, white metal and brass are quickly eaten by sulfuric acid. The part must be checked frequently. Once the nickel is stripped from the part, it is stuck into the media blaster. First thing, this is where parts get destroyed. Somebody that don't know what they're doing will really ruin this stuff. You close up on these pits here. Some places claim that they fill this. You might fill one or two pits. You're not filling two or three hundred pits. don't know what they're doing, we'll destroy this part in the first step. Right? Within reason, you can get out pretty much most of the pits. Open them up to give yourself a recessed area that'll come out smooth. The next step is to rack the part using a copper wire for the cyanide. Keeping in mind that every part is custom and different, each part will be racked in a different way using the least visible area. This particular part needs a weight to prevent it from moving and breaking contact with the bus bar. After the part is racked, it needs washed with a special electro cleaner and spray rinse to assure that no soap remains on the part. A secondary cleaning step is to dip the part in a non-electrified sulfuric acid in order to clean off the metal. The part is then thoroughly spray rinsed to remove all of the acid and placed in the cyanide for one to three minutes. When finished, it is dipped into a cyanide rinse tank. Okay, now I have cyanide copper on it. And we'll go through and we'll solder. That, were, that I had to undercut because the pits wouldn't come out of them. And at the 
to watch it with white metal because there's a real thin line with between metal and liquid because it'll melt really quick. Now the other thing is you have to be pretty dead on the first time you do this because you can't go back and start re-soldering once you put acid copper on because the acid copper will blister off and the solder will melt underneath the plating and now you'll be right back to step one have to take it all down to bare metal again if you have enough metal left to do that. If you had a bigger hole I would either make a piece or an insert and just solder it to the part to make up for the whatever happened to be missing. It's a good thing. I usually go to the back side of where a repair is done too because you have a tendency to burn through when you start sanding the repairs back down. I mean, I can generally take stuff that's in three or four pieces. Now, I soldered all the spots that were that were bad on this piece. are pretty much filled. Now you'd start going in the acid copper and sanding and buffing until you got back up to a nice mirror finish to what you could plate. Once again the part is placed into the cyanide to cover the soldered areas and help the copper stick to the part. When finished it is dipped into the cyanide rinse and spray rinse. Now it is ready to be copper plated in the acid copper. This process includes several steps with hour intervals of copper plating, sanding, and buffing until the part takes shape and is ready for plating. buffing, the part is then re-racked, avoiding as much contact as possible with the copper wire. This particular part has sharp corners and a pointed nose, which can burn easily in the nickel tube. The copper wire must be wrapped around the sensitive areas without touching them to prevent burning. When racking is finished, the part is then cleaned with kerosene and a soft bristled brush. The part needs washed to remove fingerprints. Then once again spray rinse. The part is then dipped in the sulfuric acid to clean off all organic particles. Then dipped in a tank filled with sterile DI water to remove the acid. Now it is ready to be nickel plated. This can take anywhere from 15 minutes to a half an hour depending on the part. When removed from the tank, the part is dipped in the DI rinse once again to remove the excess nickel. Finally, the part is placed in the chrome tank. The rectifier settings and time in the chrome tank are very specific to the part as well as crucial. Sharp corners and recessed areas must be appropriately accounted for because the chrome has a difficult time flowing to those areas. This is called chrome rod which means nickel is still on the surface in these particular areas of the part. Typically, the part is only in the chrome tank from 30 seconds to a minute and a half. When finished, the part is spray rinsed. Then it is buffed, 
waxed and shipped. This has been the chrome plating process courtesy of Lakeside Custom Plating. For more information, call Tracy at 440-599-2035. Or email lakeside at suite224.net.